Hi, this is uh, Tairu Hassan uh, from Brightline here at Rise in Hong Kong. I'll be having a conversation with uh, Brent Dykes uh, from uh, Domo and we'll be talking more on the conversation, the journey regarding how organizations can take ideas and make them reality. But before moving forward, maybe I'll give the floor to uh, uh, Brent to give us uh, an overview of what he's doing at uh, Domo and what Domo is about. Sure, yeah. So uh, Domo is a uh, cloud-based BI solution. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as like an operating system for your business. Um, a lot of uh, our customers rely on us to really run their, run, run their business in terms of the data on their phones. Um, so we have a mobile-friendly solution. Um, it's pretty powerful in terms Excellent. of um, how we bring all the data together uh, with ETL and then all the visualizations and other uh, things that you need to run your business on your phone. Um, and in my role specifically, I'm in consulting, in our consulting uh, group, and I, I run kind of a, a COE uh, in terms of best practices around uh, how you how we deploy our tool, how we leverage data, uh, so focus on uh, adoption um, and how to how do companies adopt and, and use the the uh, platform strate strategically within your business and get the most value from their investment. Excellent, excellent. And we are here at RISE, you know, RISE a tech conference. How does a conference like the RISE help us basically understand the future for organizations and for individuals when it comes to technology? Yeah, I think uh, with the RISE conference, you know, obviously they're focusing on a lot of the new innovations that are out there, AI, you know, machine learning. Those are some of the areas that I'm focused on in terms of data. And, um, and so I think, you know, looking into the future, looking at what other companies are doing and understanding what those trends are kind of helps our organizations to be prepared uh, for the future. You know, obviously we've, we've heard a lot of talk about big data and, and now it's really just data. Yeah. I mean, it was always kind of data, but, but you know, there's, the, there's always going to be those, those new trends and, and new things that are um, going to be really valuable to companies and I think that you know obviously AI is one of those uh, but uh, being on the analytics side on the BI side I think uh, obviously just using data as an organization is pretty critical and I think there's still room for growth there and, and you know it's kind of a journey that we're on and a lot of companies are have made tremendous headway but still a lot to do Good point. And of course, you were saying new things. And of course, we know that there is a very fast pace when it comes to technologies and organizations need to keep up right. with that fast pace. Why do you think it is that important? And, you know, you're, you're going to be disrupted occasionally. It's going to be, you know, it's, it's part of the part of the, the landscape, especially on the technology side. I've, I've worked in technology for almost 20 years now and um, seen a lot of technologies come and go. And, you know, one of the things that I think companies need to do is think of rather than just the technology you know time and time again it always comes down to not just the technology but the people and process and thinking about you know that old maxim that you know really to be truly successful with technology you need to invest in the people you need to invest in the process processes to make sure that all of that stuff is kind of you know you can't just invest in the technology you have to invest across those other areas and so I think you know thinking about that holistically, and and not just limiting yourself to the technology. I think that's really where uh, you know companies separate themselves. You know, obviously, there's, there's tremendous value, tremendous potential in these technologies as they're being you know introduced into the market. But it's really the companies that are innovative that take the time to really you know invest in these things. And it you know it starts at the top. It starts with the leadership. You know, having executive sponsors who understand, you know, that this may is not a, a quick short-term fix. It's something we have to invest in, and you know, make sure that we have the right training, we have the right uh, resources, we have the right, you know, we're investing not just in this, not just in the technology, but everything that goes along with that to to have a successful program. How organization can leverage people because you'll hear often people will say uh, people are our most important asset right. and I heard you mentioning that it's not only about the technology that people need to actually also looking at the people side within organizations yeah so it's it's looking at okay are these people trained you know do they have the training to use the tools 
our, our processes, you know, if we take the new technology, is it integrated to the existing processes the way that they need them? Or are we creating new processes that will work well for the people so they can take the best advantage of these tools? Um, so I think, that, you know, obviously thinking about the people and, and also the skill set, you know, when you're hiring people or training people, upskilling people, you know, these are all things that are really important to, to factor into your, your decisions. And in and, and the end of the day, you know, if, if people do not buy into what you're doing, you're going to face resistance and you're not going to see the progress. You're not going to see, you know, the uptake. Maybe people go through the motions, but they're not really invested. And, you know, I think leadership as well, you know, having good executive sponsorship, making sure that they're on board, that they are supportive, um, you know, people top and bottom, you know, right, right from the, the boardroom to the, to the call center. You know, everybody's got to be bought into this and, and then they have the resources, they have the tools that are going to work for them in their specific roles, they have the training, um, you know, maybe they have other means of getting support, you know, there may be lunch and learns, office hours, others. I mean, again, I'm thinking of in terms of data, no, go to, go, uh, but, but those are things that, that I've seen at companies when they're rolling out uh, analytics platforms that, you know, they do need to support the people. They have to have a rollout plan and figure out, you know, how are we going to make this work, not just for the short term, but the long term. Wonderful, wonderful. And of course, you know, there are many technologies these days. I mean, you'll hear about big data. You just say, we say now just data or AI or let's say machine learning and all these things. If you were to look at through your crystal ball, yeah, like which technology do you feel will disrupt the most uh, society or offer the most opportunities when you look forward in the future? Yeah, I, I think really... Um when I think about the, the artificial intelligence, for me, that's the one that's, that could be a real disruptor. Um, we're only just scratching the surface of the capabilities. Um, you know, and it could be a disruptor both from an advantage in terms of how we can take very menial, labor-intensive processes and turn that over to computers to handle, which will, you know, frees up humans to focus on more important things. Um, there's also ethical challenges as well um, with with AI and, and obviously you know if, if we have humans building AI a, you know models and different things but it's based on our own biases and, and maybe historical um, things the way we perceive the world you know that's going to shape the future of the world too so I think there's there's ethical things related to AI as well which is very interesting um, but you know, we're starting to see companies doing really innovative things with AI, and you know, it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning, and, and it could really have, um, you know, depending on the industry and depending on the functional area of the company, could have dramatic impact on certain roles and, and uh, companies. Yeah, I know. I mean, of course, you are more uh, focused on data. Yeah. What is the link that you see between AI and data, and how do you connect them? Yeah. So. I mean, again, within the world of analytics, there's many menial tasks. There's tasks that are not suited for humans. Today, we do them because we have to, but we're not efficient at them. Um, they're painful. Nobody wants to do them. And so if we can turn those over to a computer to do, you know, they can do them much more efficiently, much more cost effectively, um, less painful uh, for human beings. You know, I think there's, there's that opportunity there. Uh, obviously, AI will depend on the data that, that's collected and, and will feed into those models. And, and so, you know, obviously the, the quality of that data, uh, you know, they're, they're inseparable. What is the number one uh, skill that you feel teams need uh, to execute on strategy when it comes to times of uh, digital transformation? Yeah, so I'm a little bit biased here, I'll just say that, but I mean, I think one of the key skills that people will need is, aside from data literacy, which I think everybody now needs because data is so critical, it's, it's a big part of these technologies that we see, but you know, my bias is around data storytelling. So the ability to take that insight, the insights that we get out of these tools and actually share them with people in a way that we can uh, persuade them and motivate them to take action on the data. And so the skill of being able to tell stories with data um, is something that I'm very passionate about and I, I believe strongly that 
you know, we're going to all need to become data storytellers. We're going to need to be able to communicate um, and, and share the insights so that we can take advantage of, you know, what we, the value that the data offers to us through the insights we have. Well, Brent, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Awesome.